Yo, welcome back to a brand new Craftopia guide. In today's guide, we're going to be talking about making money using jack-o'-lanterns. Now, as always, if this guide does help you, please do drop a like and subscribe. Comment down below with any help that you may need, but let's do this. Now, there's a few different ways to make money in this game. The most popular, of course, being peaches, but this one is actually my personal favorite. This is making money using jack-o'-lanterns. The reason this is my absolute favorite is because it's fully automated. Now, I know I recently made a video about how to make the peach farm fully automated, but at the time of making this video, that is not actually accessible to Xbox players. And it's also kind of annoying having to reload the multi-sling when it runs out of seeds. Even though you can stack it full of seeds, eventually it will run out. This is a money-making method that doesn't stop. You can keep this going and you can make some serious money from it. And you can also set it up very easily. As opposed to having to hunt down those peach seeds, this is a lot easier. And we're going to start off by heading into our altar of transportation. Once you're in your altar, go ahead and find yourself a island of fallen leaves. Once here, we're going to be running around looking for these pumpkins. Now, if you see, this pumpkin here has a green leaf on it. Which means it's just a pumpkin. However, this pumpkin has a red leaf so as i get close to it it turns into a jack-o-lantern so we're going to put some damage into it <laughs> didn't quite mean to one shot it let's uh let's let's unequip my weapon let's go find another one be careful you don't one hit it you want to get it down to a low health so it's going to run around and look for the pumpkin with the red leaf here we go we have one here so we walk up to it, it turns into a jack-o'-lantern. We're going to afflict a little bit of damage here. There we go, down to purple. We're now going to equip some prisms, and we're going to catch one. Now they can be a little bit annoying to catch as they do fly. And I'm missing everything right now. There we go. They should be good enough to catch him. There we go. There's one. If you're planning on making more than two jack-o'-lantern farms, then you are going to need to capture more than two. However, I'm only putting down two. If you want to put down more, you absolutely can. It just means you have to capture more jack-o'-lanterns. There we go, we have our two, that's good enough for now, let's head back to the base. Now one thing you can do is you can actually capture one jack-o'-lantern, put it onto a left of a breeder with anything on the right hand side, and it will create more jack-o'-lanterns, which means you don't need to go hunting for them. Or, capture two like I have, and if you want more, put them into a breeder and just keep making more to the amount that you need to fill up the livestock breeders that you're going to see in a moment. Now, you are also going to need two green monos. This is to go onto a breeder to keep those jack-o'-lanterns alive. This is pretty standard in automations, and if you haven't seen any of my other videos, then this may be a bit new to you. Go and catch yourself some green monos, lower level if you're using big pots for them to die in. Doesn't matter the level if you're using water. So here I have two green monos and two jack-o'-lanterns. And here I have a platform. So I'm going to equip some floors, and I'm going to put a little square. Try not to fall into the water now. Put a little square like so. Now... As all of my guides go, I will show you the basics. You get as creative as you like with it. This is just how I personally like to do it. So next, you're going to equip some walls. And you're going to box, box in the little water hole. Or this could be the second layer above a pot. So that the monos go into the pot. It's the exact same process. Except you'd use two floors instead of just this one. So next, I'm going to equip a breeding facility. And I'm going to place it so it's over the hole. So as you see, anything that comes out of that hole is now going to go straight into that water. Next up, we're going to equip a livestock farm. And we are going to do the similar thing where we're going to put them just on the edge like so. Now you can do this with more than two. You can actually have two more. So one here and one on this side of the water. But I personally like to do it like this and then have a second lot with another two on that. That's how it runs in my base. But you can do it however you like. This is just showing you the basics of how to get this to work. Next up, I'm going to put some floors down at the end to give this a little bit of space. And then I'm going to put down some conveyor belts. And I'm going to put the conveyor belts all the way along this back wall. 
like so. Behind the conveyor belts, I'm then going to put some walls down just to stop anything from going further than what I'd like it to. At the end of the day, I want them to stop on the conveyor belts. Now, you don't have to have this gap between the livestock farms and the conveyor belt. It's just what I recommend to do to make make sure everything runs nice and smooth. Next up, I'm going to put a small platform at the end of the conveyor belt like so. And again, I'm going to box it in to make it look nice. And I'm going to do the same with this wall here. So what we have is we have the livestock farms facing the conveyor belts that then takes it to a separate area. I just like to do this to stop any automations messing with each other. But as I said, get as creative as you like with this. Next up, I'm going to equip some floors again. And I'm going to build just a little, little corner here and place a market inside. Just like so. Next, I'm going to place an absorber on the market. So this is what we have. We have something like this. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and equip my droppers. And I'm going to put nine on each machine. I know that may sound crazy, but it's worth it. And absorbers and droppers are used for so many different automations. I recommend stacking up as many of these as you can. I actually made a hundred of each and they've lasted me very, very well. So I'm going to put nine on this first one. There we go. That is nine droppers in one square. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. There we go. That's nine on each. Next, I'm going to equip a chest and I'm going to place it towards the outside here. And I'm going to place an absorber on the chest as well. This means anything that dies in that water, all of its loot will be absorbed into this chest. So let's just quickly run back over what we have here. So we have a breeder over a form of killing, which could be the square of water or the big pot that we've used in other automations. The best way to decide which one you're going to use is if you use low level monos, then you can use the pot. If you use high level monos, then I would suggest using the water as it actually inflicts more damage the higher level the enemy is. Next, we have two livestock farms with nine droppers on each facing some conveyor belts that's blocked off by a back wall to stop any spillage over the edge. This comes on down to a absorber attached to a market. We then have a chest with an absorber bringing in the loot from the monos so let's put this into action let's start with equipping our monos hop up onto the breeder let's place one on there and one on there and they will get to work now as they fall into the pot and die they heal the ones on top and they will heal our livestock farms so we're going to go ahead and we are going to equip our jack-o-lanterns and we're going to place them in each of these. Just like so. So as you can see, look how fast these are shooting out. Now as you can see, some of them are actually getting a little bit stuck here. That's not what we want. So what you can do is you could have some conveyor belts pushing them in. Or just bring everything a little bit closer. So just to save this being a problem, I'm actually going to equip my conveyor belts again. I'm just going to pick up these ones place down remove the stone floor and place down a conveyor belt there we go that would just save any problems but realistically i should have just moved it a little bit closer so build it to fit how you want so now we will see when this mono dies that will full heal everything the jack-o-lanterns the monos and so on everything will also then be brought into this chest here but as you can see these pumpkins are flying out now if i head into my inventory these are two and a half thousand each, which may not seem like a huge deal, but look at the rate we are getting them at. They are continuously flying out every time they capture one. So if we go check our market, we already have 195,000 in there with only 77 jack-o'-lanterns. That's really not a lot. So we will just leave this going for five minutes. We will make a serious amount of money. Now, as I mentioned before, you can add more jack-o'-lanterns to this if you wish. But I like to do two here and then have another two. Now, if you haven't had the 30th content update yet, 
the jack-o'-lanterns, when you leave them and you come back, they turn back into pumpkins. So you have to walk over them to trigger them. However, when the update drops for the 30th, or if you play on Steam, they no longer do this. They will stay exactly like this, meaning this is a never-ending process of continuously making a serious amount of money. Let's go and check our market now. It's only been another minute or so. And we're now up to 564,000. So this is absolutely great. And it's my favorite way to make money because it's fully idle. So I could leave this. I could stay around on the island. And no matter where I am, it's going to keep going. Don't have to worry about it growing and me having to go plant seeds, anything like that. It just keeps going. So next, we're going to have a problem with this chest here because these eggs will build up. It will take forever, but it will build up. So... What we're going to do is we're actually going to put a floor down behind. So I've got this floor down behind. I'm going to equip another conveyor belt. And I'm going to have it facing this way. I'm then going to wall that off. So I have this kind of build. I'm then going to equip my floors and put a floor at the end. Very similar to like what we have just done. Going to build walls all the way around. I'm then going to equip another market and place it in the gap. Same as we did on the other side. And then I'm going to place an absorber on that one as well. So very similar to what we just did. So now I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to place a dropper on here. And now when an egg is collected up, it would actually be fired out into here and sold in the market. Now this will be very low money compared to what we make with the pumpkins, but it's gonna be absolutely worth it. So there's 10 seconds left on this and we can see there is 1.2 million fat just in this market here. And this is just us running one market with two jack-o'-lanterns. Now, because of the new update that allows us to have 400 stacked in one square, you could technically have multiple layers of these jack-o'-lanterns. But there we go. That is exactly how to have yourself a fully automated jack-o'-lantern farm. Now, I could leave this over here and carry on doing my business, and that's going to make me some serious amount of money. This will continue to be shot out and sold into there for some small passive money, but mainly about not making this lag. Now, if you already have some taken up in here, I would actually advise taking this out and going and take, putting it straight into the market so that the box is empty. Now, every time it gets one item, it will shoot that one item out because there is a small delay with droppers where it shoots out one item for one dropper. That's why we put nine on here, because it means there's never a gap in between another dropper ready to shoot. So it continuously fires like so. That is actually a different dropper shooting each time. We just put them all on one square. So that will continuously be shot out, continuously sold. And there you have it, a fully automated jack-o'-lantern money farm. This, again, is my favorite way to make money. I've always had a jack-o'-lantern farm running. In fact, I've always had two exactly the same as this build running in my base. That means I'm averaging around 3 million gold every five minutes without having to do anything. Now, yes, you can make more money doing peaches. Peaches are technically the highest way to make money in the game. However, it's not fully automated, or even when it is, you then need multi-slings. You then need to load it up with peach seeds. There's a lot more that goes into it. This is a never-ending farm. This will just keep making me money. And some good money at that. Now, as always, if this guide did help you, please do drop a like and subscribe. Comment down below with any help that you need. Oh, and let me know about your money-making ways. What do you do to make your money? Are you going to switch to this? Or do you prefer doing peaches? Let me know. Now, go out there and make yourself some serious money. Remember, the pumpkins with the red leaves will turn into jack-o'-lanterns. Catch one, put into a livestock with a green mono keeping it alive. Firing it off into a market with nine droppers on each one. But most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.